Our pesky plant this week is Japanese honeysuckle, an invasive plant that you don't want to see in your woods um, or in your landscape setting. So it's really distinctive right now when it's flowering. It tends to flower late May to early June. And while it's flowering, not only does it have these um, beautiful flowers, but they're also very fragrant. And you might have seen this and thought, I love this plant, but don't be deceived. Um, Japanese honeysuckle can take over and cause problems um, in your woods as well as in other settings. So here's some things that it's doing. You can see it kind of completely carpeting areas, growing over shrubs into trees, carpeting the ground. And that's one of the reasons it's a problem is that it moves into natural areas and um, will kind of mat over things. And, um, you know, it can be a problem when it does this because it's going to be reducing the diversity of native plant species you want to see. And it can also impact your trees and regeneration of seedlings. So it really prefers these highlight full sun settings. Um, here you can see it growing there, but uh, one of the problems with Japanese honeysuckle is that it can also tolerate shade. So it might sit around in a shady spot, just waiting for the right conditions. Maybe a tree falls or you have a harvest or um, you have some disturbance there that will let it take off. Um, so while it prefers the sun, um, it can tolerate other settings. And um, in addition to kind of carpeting things and growing over them, it can climb up and into trees. So here you see some stems, some smaller trees that have, they're sure are completely covered with these vines. These vines are Japanese honeysuckle. And um, not only can that be a problem um, by growing into the tops of those trees, but what it can do, especially for those younger trees, is change their shape, kind of deform them, impact their ability to grow up into these tall, straight trees, and really smother and strangle them when they're young. Um, now, that's not as big as a concern for the kind of more mature trees that might have that thicker bark, but especially for these young saplings that are just growing, um, Japanese honeysuckle can be an issue. And in this photo, you can see it not only kind of growing all over these shrubs, but into the canopies of these trees as well. So that's a little bit about why it's a problem and what it can do in some of these natural areas. Um, but what does it look like? So Japanese honeysuckle has an opposite leaf arrangement. It's a vine. And um, you can see here um, on that vine, you have these leaves that are opposite each other. Um, and one thing that's kind of interesting about Japanese honeysuckle is that while most of those leaves most of the time are going to have these smooth margins, um, especially on, uh, I've noticed on some of uh, the lower leaves on that vine, you might actually see lobes occasionally. So here's some kind of lobing that might happen on Japanese honeysuckle, but really most of the time you're going to see it, it's going to look more like this with these smooth margins that don't have any lobes. Now in the winter time, Japanese honeysuckle in our area is kind of semi evergreen. So in the winter, it might turn this kind of deep purple or reddish color with the leaves still on. Um, some of those leaves might also still be green. Um, so another kind of thing to look for in the winter would be those leaves retained having a deeper color. So again, this time of year, it kind of sticks out because it has these um, beautiful tubular flowers that are fragrant. They start out this kind of creamy white color. And then as they age, they're going to turn more of a yellow color. Those will mature and turn into uh, blackberries, small blackberries on those vines. Um, just a kind of another thing to look for in identification would be the bark of the Japanese honeysuckle, those small vines. They kind of have this shredded bark. And if you were to cut a small stem of it um, kind of open, you would see that it's hollow on the inside. The center of that um, stem is hollow. 
And you may th be thinking, this sounds kind of familiar. I've seen lots of honeysuckle, but it's more in a shrub form. And there are some lookalikes, the number one of which I'd say is a different invasive honeysuckle. Um, that's bush honeysuckle. So the key distinguishing feature between these two is that bush honeysuckle grows as a shrub, while Japanese honeysuckle is a vine. Um, in addition, the bush honeysuckle has red berries, while the Japanese honeysuckle has those black berries. Um, but, you know, there's just example of other invasive honeysuckles that have been brought to the United States from Asia through kind of the ornamental trade. Uh, so you can still find um, uh, Japanese honeysuckle sold commercially. Um, but both of these are a problem in your woodland setting, your, your Japanese honeysuckle, the vine honeysuckle, as well as the bush honeysuckle. Um, but I do want to mention we do have a native vine honeysuckle that's a really beautiful plant. Um, and uh, people call that coral honeysuckle. And it's just gorgeous and has these bright pink uh, coral color flowers. Um, and I think it's a fantastic alternative for a uh, landscape setting. It also, though, doesn't have quite as dense of a growth form as the Japanese honeysuckle. So if you see a um, vine honeysuckle that's growing really densely and has white flowers, unfortunately, that's not going to be the coral honeysuckle. That's going to be the invasive Japanese honeysuckle. So where is it right now? As you can see from this map, it's pretty much everywhere. There's Japanese honeysuckle all over the place, and it's certainly not helped by the fact that you can still find it sold commercially by um, nurseries and retailers, uh, despite the fact that it's invasive. Um, it is a pretty uh, vine, and it can grow very well, but it does not stay put, and it will take over. Um, so what do you do if you have it? So if you'd like to get rid of it on your property, there are several different options. Um, you can certainly pull it up by hand, especially if you have a small patch or this is in a more contained area. Um, you can just pull it up. And, uh, you know, for any management practice with honeysuckle, um, winter can be a good time because Japanese honeysuckle is semi-evergreen. So it will stick out a little bit more in the winter while it retains some of those uh, leaves um, when our natives have lost them. So you can certainly pull it up by hand. Um, you can also cut the vines out of trees. Um, so that can be useful to prevent them from overtopping those trees and impacting that growth long term. Um, there are also lots of foliar herbicide options out there for Japanese honeysuckle. And um, a really good tip would be to apply those anytime kind of in the winter, that October to April period, as long as we have suitable temperatures, because then the other native plants that you want to keep aren't likely to take up that herbicide because they won't have leaves on. They're going to have lost their leaves for the winter, whereas um, Japanese honeysuckle will have retained it. And just a quick note that in this photo, you see someone spraying not Japanese honeysuckle, but another invasive plant that you can be on the lookout for right now, and that is poison hemlock, um, again with that foliar spray. So you can see they're wearing their um, personal protective equipment and applying that to the leaves. Um, so another option, if this area is mobile, you can prevent Japanese honeysuckle from setting seed by mowing it. But just to note that, that won't kill the underlying root system. So it's going to kind of keep coming back in that case. Um, so you can cut or mow or burn to contain or to prep but that's probably not going to eradicate that long term. And just kind of one other note, uh, you know, don't buy or use Japanese honeysuckle in your garden. Um, it doesn't stay there and it will move out. So instead, think about some of these great native alternatives like the coral honeysuckle uh, that I mentioned earlier. Not only is it going to look beautiful in your garden, but it's going to kind of promote the health of our natural areas better because it's going to be 
not something that's going to invade and take over and cause problems down the road. Well, thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about Japanese honeysuckle. Um, I hope you get out in your woods and promote their health. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out or check us out online.